Now, South African-born Dr. Stavros Nikolaou of Aspen Pharmacare has recently won the Hellenic Argo Award in Athens, Greece. It's given to exceptional Hellenics around the world in recognition of their ongoing humanitarian efforts. Nikolaou is of Hellenic and Cypriot heritage, a South African who's dedicated his award to his parents who came to this country as migrants many years ago. Now, he's actively been championing for health, equality and access in developing under-resourced parts of Africa. He also played a vital role during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. He joins me now. Dr. Nicola, welcome to today and thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. Dan, thanks very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, I I'm delighted to speak to you again in just a short space of time. We were together at the Agoa Forum just the other day, Correct. and we were talking about that uh, panel discussion you were part of with the Minister of Health, Dr. Joe Patla, around uh, the healthcare sector and how it can benefit from Agoa going forward. But here, as an individual, you've been honoured. I mean, how important is this honour to you? What does it mean to you? Dan, I think, I think it's more important for colleagues in the country. Uh, so I think all of these international awards all, all assist the country uh, with, with our profiling. Um, if I look at uh, some of the previous recipients of this award and uh, focus on my sector, so the global CEO of Pfizer is a previous uh, recipient. More recently, the uh, head of research and development at AstraZeneca was a recipient. So for me, this award is not about an individual or myself. It's about how do we use these platforms to build further bilateral bridges and multilateral bridges, particularly at this time, where we're seeing such significant geopolitical shifts around the globe. It's really important that South Africa keeps its global profile. You received it from the Greek president. How was that? Tell me about that moment, just for a while. Dan, to, to be honest, all I was, uh, one of the other recipients was one of my favorite football players who plays for Liverpool. His name is Costas Tsimikas. So uh, that's my club. Is it your club as well? Uh, the left so back. The left back. That's, that's it. So my, my thinking was more, uh, to be frank, about my parents at the time because they came here as poor immigrants. Um, they, they set up their life and their shop here. And I think all they wanted was for their kids to succeed. They wanted for South Africa to succeed. And it, this came shortly after the Springbok victory, right, when I received this, uh, this uh, recognition. So those were my thought processes of how wonderful our country can be when we all pull together. Yeah. It's a humanitarianism kind of spirit that is being celebrated, as I understand by this award, as a service to the public, service to the people, and your role through the COVID-19 pandemic in your country with Aspen, for example, in that pharmaceutical world, uh, was there for everybody, everybody to see. Is that what you think made you stand out in terms of being noticed as a South African of, of Hellenic uh, ancestry to be honoured? So the way I understand it, there's a, there's a committee of 12 that selects you. Uh, they're, they're independent, um, they're a representation of academia, uh, business, uh, some people formerly from government. So they make up this panel of 12 and they consider a number of uh, candidates from around the world. So I, I think what was important in this instance is that I'm a strong advocate for vaccine and healthcare equality for Africa in our lifetime. Uh, and when I was speaking to some of the judges afterwards, because you get to mingle with them before the event, and even when I spoke to the president of Greece, uh, she said, you know, we'd like to thank you for that role that you've played in, uh, in global healthcare and agitating for equality for people on the African continent. We, we recognize that Africa was left behind at the time. Um, but equally, Dan, it's, it's not only about our country and our continent. There are many other areas that require humanitarian relief. And I must say, Aspen's been very good mm -hmm. at stepping up, whether it's in the Ukraine, uh, in, in Turkey and Syria when there was an earthquake, or in Lebanon when there was that massive explosion. Mm. Do you think we will achieve vaccine equality? D Dan, uh, it's, it's an ambition that I think we all share because... We all, to a greater or lesser extent, felt the pain of being at the back end of the queue. And I'm sure you know many people that died during COVID, 
they could have been uh, spared, lives and livelihoods were unnecessarily lost. So what is positive for me is that the continent is capacitating itself. Uh, President Ramaphosa has taken a lead in that regard, but the Africa CDC and our own government in this country are taking a lead to ensure that we have health security in our lifetime. So I remain optimistic because of the positive steps that we are taking at the moment. Yeah, let's just come to your space, I mean, with Aspen and stuff, that world-class facility that is sitting and, and making vaccines and stuff. Are other African countries buying from, from, from you? Because we, we want to promote intra-Africa trade. You and I had that conversation just the right. other day at, uh, at the back of the AGOA uh, forum. I mean, but just at that scale, do you see that? Because we have to support our own initiatives as Cor Africans. Co correct. So, Dan, it's a bit premature because we're not in production for what we call routine vaccines yet. Uh, we, we set up on an emergency basis to make COVID vaccines at the time. Of course, the demand has died down completely, as we know. So we are gearing up to produce what we call routine vaccines. These are pediatric vaccines. Uh, and I'm optimistic with the mechanisms that are being put in place. Pediatric that, uh, vaccines like measles and stuff like that? Co for, correct. For Me okay. Yeah, okay. Me measles, uh, pneumococcal is, okay. is very big. Okay. Rotavirus is very big. Okay. You know, these are all, there's something called hexavalent. Yes. Th these are all routine Bread and butter so you are business. busy gearing up for that at, at the facility in, in Quebec. Co correct. But I'm confident with the movement I'm seeing, um, both from Gabi, which is a global uh, uh, vaccine alliance, and even the African Union through Africa CDC, I'm seeing significant movement, which I haven't seen previously. So I'm confident that Africa will start buying from Africa for Africa. Yeah, because, I mean, the Agoa thing was about America. That's fine, and we need that, uh, as the president spoke there, and you yourself and other business people told me. However, we need to be seen to be doing things, things our, our, ourselves. What's the next frontier for you in this pharmaceutical industry in terms of our continent? Is it in exactly what you've just said, or there is, is there more? Are you able to capacitate our neighbors, for example? We just in the middle of, of, of summer now, uh, and uh, malaria is still killing our, our, our children and stuff. There's a vaccines that have been tried out. There's one currently that looks like promising, for example, but malaria is still killing. I mean, 70 South Africans died, or people died in South Africa this year just because of malaria, and we can prevent that. Then, very briefly, three areas. So the, the first is we need to restore confidence to our country. That's more at a macro level. We need to set the country on a different economic trajectory. I'm very passionate about that. And, and I'm optimistic. You know, I've never met a pessimist that ever solved a problem in life. So I'm optimistic that private and public sector working together can get us on a completely different economic trajectory. The second thing is in health. Now, health security, achieving health security, and we saw exactly why during COVID, why you need health security. Okay, so I don't, I don't need to rehearse that. Yes. Everyone's convinced now. They weren't four years ago. It, uh, you know, health was a soft issue. Now everyone's convinced and okay. understand. Now, the third thing is how are we going to achieve health security? Where are the weaknesses in the, in the African healthcare system? There, there are, are three things we need to do. Number one, we need to digitalize. So we optimize healthcare outcomes through digitalization. Second, we need to strengthen healthcare systems. Um, that means further infrastructural investment. And then the last thing is what I've been speaking about. Nothing is more effective in healthcare than prevention. And vaccines are arguably the most effective thing outside of clean running water to prevent disease and, and death. So vaccine production on the continent, other medical countermeasures, including diagnostics. And the last point is we, we've got a sinister pandemic that is staring us in the face right now. It is called non-communicable diseases. So HIV, TB were communicable diseases. We now have something called non-communicable diseases, which is diabetes, it's cancer, and unfortunately we've made very little impact in those areas. So that's got to be the next frontier, and Aspen is working uh, quite closely with partners to try and make an impact in that area as well. Last question, where you could possibly make impact? Affordability. Because medicines are very expensive, vaccines can be very costly. You produce them, are you, I'm going to make sure, because affordability then means access. Correct. So you're right. Affordability and access are intertwined 
hand in glove. And that is what has prevented our people, even at the early onset of HIV. Uh, antiretrovirals in 2000, 2001, were the, the cost was $10,000 per patient per year. We managed to bring it right down to $180 per patient per year by incepting the first generic antiretrovirals. We pioneered them. And there's a lot to be said around local production and access. And that's where we want to take a conversation. Okay. And that will assist affordability if it's locally produced. Correct. For example. Correct. Thank you very much for your time and congratulations again for and the Thank award. you very much. Thanks for coming in and good luck to the Proteas. I see you are properly clad uh, in green supporting the Proteas. Hopefully they make it as well and keep up that. Uh, and, and, ho and hopefully uh, people will replicate the shirt <laughs> when we next play on Thursday. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Dan. It's much, been a great yeah. pleasure. That's Dr. Stavros Nikolaou uh, from Aspen Pharmacare. He's of Greek origin, of course, South African here of uh, Hellenic and Cypriot heritage being awarded. Uh, the um, Hellenic Argo Award for his contribution to the healthcare sector here in our country.